Hi everybody. I thought as a follow-up to the video I did on making your own printed circuit board, it would be quite useful for the hobbyists to see how they could make their own UV exposure unit quite cheaply. Uh, although you can buy these uh, commercially, uh, they're quite expensive. Even the smallest ones that have certain limitations on size are costing around £140. And the medium-sized ones, which will do most of the requirements for the hobbyist, are costing between 250 to 350 pounds or more so quite expensive units so what I thought I'd do today is show you how you can make your own UV exposure unit for around about 20 pounds but before we do that let's have a just look at the, some of the requirements with regard to the ultraviolet light that we need to make one of these units right well here we can see the electromagnetic spectrum and the area that we're interested in is the ultraviolet section uh, that itself is split into four main bands the uh, shortest wavelength there, the vacuum UV uh, is used today in the medical industry and they use it for disinfecting uh, things like surgical equipment uh, it's also used in the uh, silicon chip industry uh, for uh, the manufacture of ICs um, then we have the three other main bands there the UVC which is in the middle and that uh, wavelength between 200 and 280 uh, is used in the uh, industry in laboratories for uh, cleaning uh, surfaces it's also used for decontaminating water supplies and then we have UVB and UVA now the uh, UVB and UVA is the, the the main areas that you would see in sort of domestic uh, situations um, you have things like uh, barcode readers and barcode readers would operate in the UVA area and uh, you would have light therapy uh, and that would probably operate in the UVB area or on the border between UVB and UVA now uh, the interesting thing is that the uh, UVA area which is the longest wavelength sometimes referred to as the near ultraviolet spectrum uh, is the area that we use for the process of the printed circuit boards and uh, the interesting thing is that it's in this area as well that um, you'll find that these uh, insect uh, repellers are used or these bug zappers uh, which kill flies and other insects uh, they also operate in this area and that is quite useful in terms of what I propose to do today so let's have a look uh, more closely at this area and uh, see what the wavelength we need now for our uh, ultraviolet uh, box for our printed circuit board well here you can see the region now that we're interested in for the production of our printed circuit boards the photoresist printed circuit boards uh, are effective over a range of uh, ultraviolet light between 350 to 400 nanometers and the peak of their operation in terms of effectiveness is around 360 nanometers so you want to have the strength of your ultraviolet light around this wavelength here to be effective on the photoresist material on the printed circuit board. Now if you were to purchase a commercial ultraviolet uh, exposure box from a supplier such as Mega Electronics they actually operate around this region between 360 and 365 nanometers with ultraviolet light which they expose to the sensitized printed circuit board. Now the type of printed circuit boards that we used have a positive uh, photoresist coating on them and if you expose it to this uh, wavelength of ultraviolet light then you can develop those boards and etch away the photoresist coating in the areas that were exposed to the light leaving the printed circuit area layout on the board ready for etching. Now it's, it's worth pointing out that uh, some people are obviously worried about the effect that this could have on your skin or on your eyesight but the wavelength, the ultraviolet wavelength which could damage 
either your eyes or your skin is not in this uh, region here it's actually below 300 nanometers and more accurately it's between 265 to 275 nanometers where you have damage that can be caused by ultraviolet light on eyes or skin. So the ultraviolet that we're using here uh, is not that dangerous in terms of uh, you being exposed to this light. Now I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, insect killers or bug zappers as they're sometimes referred to uh, for killing insects uh, they actually operate in an ultraviolet spectrum between around 350 to around 370 nanometers. So they operate within the band that we're interested in for our printed circuit board uh, production there. I've been looking at different uh, insect killers that use ultraviolet lights and uh, there are some that uh, you can get which are very close to the 360 or 365 nanometers. So let me show you what I've found. Right, here's the unit that I found. Uh, quite a nice unit. It's uh, a high powered insect killer using two fluorescent ultraviolet tubes. And um, this particular unit uh, only cost me £14.99. Extremely cheap. So what I'm going to show you today is how we can modify this so we can use it as our printed circuit board photo exposure box. Right here we have a closer look at the, the unit itself. Uh, as you can see it has a metal grill at the front and uh, behind the grill you've actually got uh, another grill for killing any insects and then behind that the ultraviolet tubes. Now we're not interested in these grills so we need to remove the grills and fully expose the ultraviolet tubes. So we're going to modify this. Uh, the nice thing is that uh, all the electronics, the ballast for the uh, ultraviolet uh, fluorescent tubes is all in the housing with the on-off switch here. Switch on. And if we remove all this uh, clutter that we have at the front here then the ultraviolet light will shine nicely onto our printed circuit board. All we then need to do is replace the grid at the front here with our, either a plastic or a glass sheet which we can lay our PCB on. So I think what the first thing we'll do is we'll remove the, the grills and then have a look at how we can remove the other items that we know don't need to use. What I'm going to do first of all is remove the uh, the tray at the bottom which normally catches the uh, insects remove the tray and then the next thing I need to do is remove the uh, the metal grills at the front and the back of the module just four screws and then remove the uh, the grill and now we'll just turn it round and we'll remove the grill from the other side the same process there's just four screws holding this in two at the top and two at the side grill from the back of the unit. To remove that uh, electric grill there we need to take the side panels off and that's easily done. There's one screw at the bottom and then you have two screws here at the, at the top. So let me just remove that. Right well I've removed all the screws from the side panels there. There were three screws in each uh, side panel. So I can now remove the the two side panels.
and that exposes the whole unit. Right, what I'm going to do next is remove this, this grill here so we've got full exposure of the UV tubes and they're simply removed by unscrewing these uh, plastic uh, inserts there. Uh, the only connection to these is uh, by wires on the inside. Right, these, uh, there's four plastic uh, inserts here which simply screw out. Uh, they're just tapping onto the, the metal of the grill. So let me just take these four out and then we'll take the four out from the other side. Right, well there you see now I've removed the two uh, wire grills which zap the, uh, the insects. We don't need those. And uh, all these little plastic uh, screws that were fixing this uh, to the side of the, the unit. So we can put that to one side, we don't need them. Right, I'm now just temporarily going to remove the uh, fluorescent tubes just to make sure they don't get damaged. And the next thing we need to do is disconnect the circuitry associated with the electric field that zaps the insects. And to do that we need to just remove this, uh, this top cover, so we should now just pull away. And that exposes the choke there for the fluorescent tube and the little two starters there which we need to keep. And this transformer here is what's used to energise the electric field there to zap the insect. So this we no longer need so we need to remove this. So this is the uh, the high voltage transformer that we need to remove and uh, it's simply these wires pull through so they are already disconnected because they went to the the metal grid and you can see here we've got the two red wires that's going to the input there, the live input. So we need to remove these two. Right, to, re, to remove the wire, you see the red wire here is then connected to a, a white cable which goes into the connector there on the choke which is the live input as well. So um, to remove that I've just slackened off a screw there and then you need to put a screwdriver in the slot there and press down and that releases a spring clip and then they pull out. So I've now removed the first wire and then we need to make sure that the the normal live connection going into the choke is pushed back in, full, firmly in. There we go. And I'll just tighten up the screw. Right, to remove the, uh, the neutral feed to the high voltage transformer, this one here, uh, you follow it through. You'll find that thing goes into a connector here and what I'm going to do is cut that lead inside the plastic connector as low down as possible. The, uh, the two wires now here disconnected from the rest of the unit. So we can now remove this uh, this high voltage transformer here, which I'll do now. And right, I've just removed the two nuts and bolts on either side of this transformer, so this whole unit now can be removed and put to one side. Might be useful on another project. Now all we're left with is the, the main casing, the choke there for the fluorescent tubes, the ballast choke, and the two starters. And uh, since I did cut off the neutral feed to the other transformer from this connector, 
Although it's cut deep down into the plastic, what I'm going to do on the safe side is just put some insulation tape around that. Right, well there we are. I've, I've just put a little bit of additional insulation tape around that, uh, that connector point there, just to be on the safe side. But if you wish, you could replace that with a little strip connector, whatever you prefer. Well, the next thing we'll do now is we'll reassemble the unit. And just before I reassemble the unit, I think what I might do also is remove some of these little hanging tags here. We don't need these anymore. We're not going to be hanging this unit. So I'll remove these little metal hanging tags from either side. These are simply removed by removing one screw. And then taking out the, the metal hanging tab. OK, let me now reassemble the whole unit. Right, there we have now the unit all screwed back together. And uh, what I now want to do is, is fix the bottom onto this. Now, if you remember, we had a tray, a removable tray on to catch the killed insects. And I'm going to use this. Uh, it's got plastic sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix this permanently at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is drill some holes at the side going through the plastic and then bolt this onto the bottom of the case so we've got a rigid uh, a rigid case. I've bolted the bottom of the case on there I've got two nut and bolts there drilled through and bolted through to the inside you can see and the other side there just bolted through with some spring washers on. Now what we have is a nice rigid case clear top and bottom. I'm going to put cut a piece of uh, sheet aluminium to go on the bottom which will reflect the ultraviolet light and then I'll cut either a piece of glass or a piece of perspex to go on the top. So there you see now I've cut a piece of uh, sheet aluminium. Uh, I've cut it to the, uh, the right height from there to, to there and I've made it just slightly wider as you can see there we've got a few millimetres either side and the intention is that it will slot into the plastic as you see there and slot into the side and then I'll fix it with these two fixing screws here at the top. Now to do that I'll have to temporarily just remove the the bottom or slacken off at least the bottom cover again to get this slotted in. I'm just going to have to take a little bit off the plastic there so the aluminium can slot down it. It's just a little bit too tight so all I'm going to do is use a, a little Stanley knife and then I'm just going to chip away a small piece of plastic there and there uh, both this side and the other side uh, sufficient to allow the uh, aluminium to slot in. Right we have the uh, the aluminium sheet now firmly fixed in the base it's slotted in at the sides and the bottom base is screwed back tight at the bottom. I've just marked two uh, fixing screw holes there which I just need to drill a, a couple of pilot uh, holes there so I can then screw it with the uh, self tapping screws that were there before into the case. It's now uh, firmly screwed down and fixed to the, uh, the metal casing here. Now we're looking into the base of the unit. I'm now going to just remove the protective film of the aluminium so we get a nice shiny aluminium. The next thing I'm going to do now is uh, re refit the uh, fluorescent tube. You see here it actually tells you the, uh, the wavelength of the tube and on these ones you can clearly see it's 368. Right there we have the uh, the unit all back together now. There you go, seems to be working fine. Right there we have cut a piece of, uh, of glass, although you could use perspex, clear perspex. I've just cut it slightly oversized so I can fit it on the top there. I can fit the uh, the glass on top now and uh, probably just put some tape around the edges because it's a little bit sharp around the edges. 
Right, well here's the uh, the finished unit. I've got the, the glass on top. Um, I managed to find some little fixings I had in a, a junk box I had. Two little plastic fixings I've made just to secure the glass on the top there. Well to simply use the unit now, you, all you need to do is put your uh, transparency on top there. What I would normally do is have some uh, tape just uh, to secure the transparency onto the glass so it doesn't move around and then position your board on top of the transparency and then what I would do is uh, get yourself a piece of hardboard or something or thick cardboard just to cover over the top um, and just but make sure that you don't disturb the, uh, the printed circuit board and then simply switch the unit on and then you leave it for about two minutes and then switch off after two minutes and then develop the uh, the printed circuit board well I hope you found this little project today of interest uh, this uh, PCB ultraviolet exposure unit only cost me around 20 pounds to build all told uh, the actual fly killer which we converted here was $14.99 from Maplin but you can get similar fly killer units like this from other sources uh, for round about the same price so thanks for watching if you found this of interest please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you all again next time bye for now